Hi, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, with all the confusion about when the rapture is going to occur in relation to the tribulation, um, I really felt the need to make this video. So in this video, uh, I'm going to be reading a quick article that explains why the rapture is pre-tribulation. And then near the end of the video, I'll be talking about my own opinion and why I think the rapture is pre-tribulation. I'm also going to be talking about the confirmations I've received from God about why the rapture is pre-tribulation. So the article is titled, When is the rapture going to occur in relation to the tribulation? So it's pretty short, just stick for, stick for the whole video, I'll appreciate your time. So it says, The timing of the rapture in relation to the tribulation is one of the most controversial issues in the church today. The three primary views are pre-tribulation, the rapture occurs before the tribulation, mid-tribulation, when the rapture occurs at or near the midpoint of the tribulation, and post-tribulation, the rapture occurs at the end of tribulation. A fourth view, commonly known as pre-wrath, is a slight modification of the mid-tribulation position. So, it says, first, it is important to recognize the purpose of the tribulation. According to Daniel 9.27, there is a 70th or seven, 7 years there is still yet to come. Daniel's entire prophecy of the of the 77s, Daniel 9.20-27, is speaking of the nation of Israel. It is a time period in which God focuses His attention especially on Israel. The 70th, 7, the tribulation must also be a time when God deals specifically with Israel. While this does not necessarily indicate that the church could not also be present, it does bring into question why the church would need to be on the earth during the time. So the primary scripture passage on the rapture is 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-18. It states that all living believers along with all believers who have died will meet the Lord Jesus in the air and will be with him forever. The rapture is God's removing his people from the earth. A few verses later in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, Paul says, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation, which deals primarily, primarily with the period of the tribulation, is a prophetic message of how God will pour out his wrath upon the earth during the tribulation. It seems inconsistent for God to promise believers that they will not suffer wrath and then leave them on the earth to suffer through the wrath of tribulation. The fact that God promises to deliver Christians from wrath shortly after promising to remove His people from the earth seems to link those two events together. Another cru crucial passage on the timing of the rapture is Revelation 3.10 in which Christ promises to deliver believer, believe, believers from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the earth. This could mean two things. Either Christ will protect believers in the midst of, of the trials or He will deliver believers out of the trials. Both are valid meanings of the gr Greek word translated from. However, it is important to recognize what believers are promised to be kept from. It is, it is not just a trial, but the hour of trial. Christ is promising to keep believers from the very time period that contains the trials, namely the tribulation, the purpose of the tribulation, the purpose of the rapture, the meaning of 1 Thessalonians 5, nine, and the interpretation of Revelation 3.10 all give clear support to the pre-tribulation position. If the Bible is interpreted literally and consistently, the pre-tribulation position is the most biblically based interpretation. So now that, so now that you know what the, now that you know that the pre-tribulation is the rapture is the pre-tribulation rapture is biblical, you the, the post-tribbers and the mid-tribbers they can stop at all those arguments about saying oh how the pre-trib is not biblical this and that. What I think is going on is that the post-tribbers, the Bible verses that talk about the rapture and the second coming, I feel like the post-tribbers are confusing the two and they think the second coming is the rapture, which is not. The rapture, during the rapture, we meet the Lord in the air. During the second coming, Jesus Christ actually touches both of His feet on the earth. That doesn't occur during the rapture. During the rapture, we just meet Him in the air. So yeah, if, if you're a post-tribber and you're confusing the the second coming and the rapture remember those two the second coming and the rapture is not the same thing they're different events also just think about it from this perspective 
if we know that after the tribulation it's going to be the thousand year reign of Christ, what's going to be the point of the rapture? So if the rapture happens and we know that after the rapture it's the thousand year reign on earth, then who's going to be there to rule along with Christ in the thousand years? It doesn't make sense. If the people that they get raptured, they get to, they get to get go to heaven, then who's going to be there for the thousand year? It's the, who's going to rule with Christ? Who? The people that took the mark of the beast? It doesn't make sense. Um, you see where I'm getting at here? And also remember the Bible says that the, the, it, the rapture will come like a thief in the night. If, if, if the post-tribulation position, if you look at it from that way, then it is not a thief in the night. If we're in the tribulation and we know the tribulation is going to end in this amount of years, then we can make an accurate prediction based on exactly what day the Lord will come. So if the, the post-tribulation position is not correct because if it because the Bible says that Jesus will come like a thief in the night and if, if, if the rapture is post-tribulation, then Jesus won't come like a thief in the night in the night so we can you see what i'm getting at here and also in in the dream i received about the about the rapture from god i received the dream and a vision i'll talk about the vision after in the dream i received things were just it wasn't we weren't in world war three we weren't in anything it was just that i was i was telling people the rapture was going to happen the rapture was going to happen and then it happened it wasn't like we were during the tribulation. I was, I was speaking with people normally. Nobody was killing me because I was a Christian. Nobody was stoning me, throwing rocks at me. I still had some freedom of speech and I was, I was evangelizing to people in the dream. And then the rapture happened. So if, if, if the rapture was post-tribulation, I'm pretty sure in that dream that I received, the Lord will make it clear to me that the, it's post-tribulation. In the dream, I would be getting persecuted or somebody will be trying to be kill me because i'm a christian but in the dream that didn't happen so from that i can conclude that's a confirmation from god that the rapture is pre-tribulation also i received another conf confirmation in the open vision i had remember when i had this open vision and also the dream i had i made a video about it you can check it out and in the open vision i had when I had the vision, I was completely awake when it happened. And then I fell into this state of trance like Paul talked about. And then the vision started. So the, the vision wasn't a dream. Even though some dreams are visions, this vision wasn't a dream. It was an open vision. And yeah, in the open vision, I was just thinking to myself, the rapture happened. Uh, uh, as I'm being taken to heaven, I look down on earth. I'm like, wait a minute. Where did all this chaos come from? Like I was on earth a minute ago or, or however long ago I was on earth. And then all this chaos just started out of nowhere. If Remember, if the rapture was post-tribulation in that vision that I received from God, he would make it clear to me that I escaped earth uh, thing um, after all this chaos. But I, as I was going up on earth, the chaos was starting. So yeah, that, that's another confirmation that the rapture is uh, pre-tribulation. So yeah. That's in this video. I broke it down with the confirmations I've got from God. Um, just thinking about the thousand-year reign of Christ, of of how the rapture can't happen after the after the thing um, after the tribulation, because the Christians that are alive after the tribulation, they're going to be in the thousand-year reign of Christ, and the people that were raptured, they're going to come back to earth to rule along with Christ. So I've explained that, I've talked about the confirmations I've got and I've talked it about from biblically. So now you know that now you know that the rapture is pre-tribulation, repent of your sins, confess your sins. Be pretty much be rapture ready because the Bible prophecy has been fulfilled. Mockers came, homosexuality has been accepted, people deny that God created the heavens and earth, etc. etc. So Bible prophecy has been fulfilled. I believe we are in the end of times and the rapture is imminent. So be rapture ready. You don't want to be left behind for the tribulation and to face the coming horrors when you can just accept Christ, confess your sins and turn away from all your sins. And if you can't turn away from all your sins, ask God to help you to overcome those sins. So be rapture ready, stay vigilant. And also in the description box of this video, um, I have a message about the rapture, tribulation, second coming, end times. Please spread that message if you have not done so already. Use that message to warn other people. I understand that that message may not bring souls to Christ right now, but after the rapture happens and the tribulation starts, people will remember that message and they'll say, oh, wait a minute, some Christian gave me this message before all this chaos started. And now 
I know that what they were saying is the truth and they'll come to Christ then. So if that message doesn't doesn't bring people to Christ now, don't be disappointed. After the rapture happens, the people remember that message and they'll come to Christ then. So thanks for listening. All glory to God. Because all glory belongs to Him. I really appreciate the time that you took to listen to this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.